Welcome everyone to another edition of Making an Impact. I am your host, Simply Sensational Billy James. Okay, we got a lot to talk about what an impact wrestling, a live impact, uh, really not truly live, it was on a slight delay, but nevertheless, um, we got the triple threat elimination match to determine the new TNA X Division Champion. Kurt Angle's wrestling a mystery opponent of EC3's choice. And probably uh, the most important, uh, well, before that, uh, Angelina Love takes on Velvet Sky. If Velvet beats Angelina Love, she gets her spot back on the knockouts roster. Bram, of course, has been making the challenge to pass TNA uh, Impact Wrestling Superstars. Will he call out someone this week? And of course, uh, probably one of the biggest matches of the night. It is the Dirty Heels taking on the Wolves in the Best of Five series. Tonight, it is full metal mayhem. The Wolves are one up on the Dirty Heels. Can the Wolves pull it out and walk out as the new TNA Tag Team Champions? Or will the Dirty Heels tie it up, forcing the fifth match? We're going to find out about that and much, much more. And um, Slammiversary is a Sunday. And that uh, will be another show. Uh, that will be the uh, TNA Slammiversary Preview Podcast. So you'll have to check that out, too. It also will be on the same page as along with the uh, Making an Impact YouTube show. So be easy to find. So let's get started and get to the action right now. Okay, we start off Impact Wrestling with the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Kurt Angle, coming out to the ring. Kurt Angle talks about EC's three campaign toward the uh, world heavyweight t uh, title is coming to an end at the Bell to Bell next week, uh, Impact Wrestling next week. He will defeat EC3 and prove why he is the best, period. And demands he wants to know who his mystery opponent is for tonight. EC3 comes down and says, you might be the best, but let's get it straight. I've beaten legends. I've beaten Sting. I've beaten Hall of Famers. I've beaten you. I've beaten Sting. I've beaten Bully Ray. And he goes on and on and says that uh, he will uh, win at uh, Bell of Bell next week. Krangle says, no, you're going to tap next week just like my opponent tonight. Who is he? Uh, EC3 looks like he's going to come down the ring, thinks the better of it, introduces Kurt Angle's opponent. It is Matt Hardy. Uh, Matt Hardy has never took on Kurt Angle, so tonight, for the first time, it's going to be Kurt Angle versus Matt Hardy. Um, interesting choice. Uh, great to see Matt Hardy back. Matt Hardy's been off TV ever since uh, Jeff uh, suffered his injury and they had to vacate the uh, T-Day tag team titles um on the side note congratulations to matt hardy matt, uh, matt hardy just became a dad uh he, him and his wife well his wife had uh did the actual delivery but uh they uh, both welcomed their first uh, uh child together uh, a boy so uh congratulations to the couple and such but uh it looks like it's gonna be an interesting match tonight Matt Hardy taking on Kurt Angle. Okay, we have our first match of the night, and it is to determine the new TNA X Division Champion. It's Loki versus Tigre Uno versus Grado. It's an elimination triple threat match. And the match gets started with Loki and Grado arguing, uh, with uh, Loki slapping uh, Grado. He sends Grado down to the mat. He gets out of the way, and it's uh, Tigre Uno and uh, Loki 
uh, going at it. Loki uh, misses, so he gets sent to the outside ring, so Grado and uh, uh, Uno go at it. Uno tries to pick up uh, Grado, can't, um, and such, and Grado uh, is able to slam Tigre Uno. He gets taken out when he goes for a top rope move. His legs are swept by Loki. Loki comes back in, hits the Warriors way. One, two, three. Grado is out of there. I know my buddy John loves Grado, but I'm sorry. He sucks just as bad as Joseph Barks. Sorry. Okay, so we have Tiger Uno and uh, Loki now going one-on-one -on -one against each other. Uh, Loki come off the ropes with a nice springboard hurricanrana onto Tiger Uno. Very impressive. Uh, Tiger Uno uh, missed a uh, corkscrew um, uh, uh, plancha. A uh, corkscrew dive, uh, excuse me, springboard corkscrew dive. Um, Loki was able to take advantage of it and went for a, a near pinfall, couldn't get it. Um, but uh, when uh, uh, Loki went for a uh, springboard move, I believe, uh, he missed, and uh, uh, Tiger Uno was able to hit the saber tooth splash, get the win. Tiger Uno is the new X Division champion. Congratulations, Tagri Uno, um, uh, Mexican luchador. Um, you know, if TNA is trying to get the Latino market, you know, it's not a bad thing to build around this guy. Uh, he was trained by Rey Mysterio Sr. Um, you know, he's very impressive. He's got good set moves. And uh, it's the kind of guy you can build the X Division around as far as, you know, bringing in the Latino market. And I think it's a good idea. Uh, on a side note, uh, Loki announced that he has parted ways with TNA, and he's no longer a part of the company. Um, all I can say to that is, uh, this is I think this makes uh, Loki's fourth time in the company. Uh, he's had some great runs in the company, this pro uh, probably being one of his good runs. You know, he's had multi-X uh, Division title runs. Um, he was a part of Triple X along with Christopher Daniels and um, Elix Skipper. Uh, they were uh, tag team champions, X Division champions. Uh, but you know, uh, the rumor is is that he left because TNA decided to put the title on Tiger Uno. If that's the case, dude, grow up, okay? I mean, it would have been different had they put the title on Greedo. I'd be pissed right now, and I'd be going on a tirade, and I would agree with. Uh, uh, Loki, if that was the case, but it's not. Tiger Uno deserves it, so get off of it and grow up, okay? But nevertheless, we have a new X Division champion, Tiger Uno. So, uh, I, once the match became down to uh, Loki and uh, Uno, not a bad match. Yeah, check it out. Okay, we had Angelia Love take it on Velvet Sky. If Velvet wins, she gets her spot back on the TNA Knockouts roster. Um, before the match began, uh, Angelina Love says this is her last chance to get her spot back, and uh, she, uh, she's going to make damn sure it doesn't happen. Angelina strikes first, slapping and shoving uh, Velvet, but Velvet don't take it. She hits a awesome spear on Angelina, then starts um, uh, ramming her head into the ring, into the turnbuckle, sends her flying to the outside of the ring, goes to the outside, slams her face first onto the apron, and then sends her into the ring post. Angelina tries to come back, but she gets uh, sent into the still steps for her troubles. Velvet sends Angelina back into the ring, but a Angelina is able to take advantage. She hits a nice drop kick. She now gets control of the match, tossing Velvet all over the ring like a rag doll. However, that all comes to an end when Angelina Love tries to go for a top rope move. Velvet knocks her off, sends her to the mat, and starts nailing her with a series of kicks, ending it with a nice roundhouse enziguri kick. Angelina Love tries one more time to hit her finishing move, the Botox injection, to get control of the match. 
She misses, and it allows Velvet Sky to hit a stunner. One, two, three. Velvet Sky is now part back on the TNA Knockouts roster. What does this mean? Does this mean the feud between Angelina Love and Velvet Sky is over? Hell no. It's not over. I think we're going to see some more matches of these girls. And the big factor question is, where does Madison Rain fit in all this? you got to remember, the beautiful people, it was. It started out Angelina Love and Velvet Sky, but then who was the first third member of the group? Madison Rain. Where does Madison Rain fit into this equation? That is the million-dollar question. But it's going to be interesting to see. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first time Angelina Love and Velvet Sky have faced off against each other. They've always been a cohesive unit. So this is going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen. Um, and especially where uh, Madison Rain falls into this mix. Um, also, uh, where, uh, where does this bring Angel uh, Velvet at? Will she eventually get a TNA uh, knockout uh, championship match? And what about uh, Angelina Love? What does this happen to her? I'm sure this knocks her down a peg or two on the uh, on the roster. But we'll have to see what's going to happen. Um, pretty good to see uh, Velvet Sky back on the main roster. Things are getting interesting. Okay, full Metal Mayhem, it was the Dirty Hills, as you can tell, the greatest man that ever lived, Austin Aries, and the It Factor, Bobby Roode, take it on, the Wolves, Davey Richards, and Eddie Edwards, and oh my god, what a match, I can't even describe it, so I'm just giving highlights of this, and now I'm just giving little highlights, so these is just the appetite tasers okay this match started off they had steel chairs the wolves had control nailing uh the dirty hills dirty hills get sent to the outside of the ring the wolves go for the you know, dive through the ropes but they get nailed with a ladder by the dirty hills and the dirty hills now have control they wrestle holding uh, each of the wolves in headlocks the Wolves try to make a comeback, but for their troubles, they get set head first into steel chairs that were set up in the middle of the ring. Well, it doesn't last long as uh, the uh, Wolves are able to take out the Dirty Hills, sending both Rude and Aries to the outside of the ring, where they nail a trifecta of suicide dives, rocking Rude and Aries. But uh, Rude and Aries is able to make a combat, and boy, do they make a, a spectacular move. Setting up a table, Rude sets Eddie Edwards up for a power bomb, and Aries nails Edwards with a drop kick, sending him through the table. Fortunately for the Wolves, Davey Richard was able to jump in and make the save, preventing the three count. The Wolves come back, they take control of the match, and boy, do they ever. They start beating the crap out of each Rude and Aries with the steel trash can lids, beating them back and forth. Eventually, they put Aries in, uh, put the trash can over Aries, beating the living crap out of him. And for the troubles, uh, the, I believe it was Richards who tries to go up for a top rope move. What does he get for his troubles? He gets pushed off the top. He gets nailed in the back of, in the back with a steel chair by Rude. Rude comes in. Hey, that's no DQ. He low balls, low blows Eddie Edwards and sets Aries on top of him who still has the cra trash can on him. Uh, who's still inside the trash can. One, two, three. Dirty heels win. It's tied up two to a piece. We go to a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker happens next week, the Bell to Bell episode of Impact Wrestling, and it was just announced at Slammiversary, it will be the greatest man that ever lived, Austin Aries, taking on Damian Richards of the Wolves. The winner will pick the stipulation for the fifth and final match in the Best of Five series. We will have new TNA 
Tag Team Champions come next week. Who will it be? Will it be the Dirty Hills or will it be the Wolves? If you're wondering who I'm rooting for, you can tell it right here. I'm going with the Dirty Hills. Austin Aries and Bobby Roode. And speaking about Austin Aries, Austin Aries' contract with TNA is supposedly up uh, at the end of this month after Slammiversary. Um, we know he's going to be working, uh, the, uh, he, he already worked the taping for July the 1st, and obviously he's working the, uh, he's worked the uh, TV tapings throughout the weekend. Uh, after those tapings, will he still be a part of TNA? That's the million dollar question. We're all wanting to know. Uh, I hope he he resigns with TNA, but if he doesn't resign, where does Austin Aries go? Does he go to the Ring of Honor? Does he go to uh, NXT? Does he go over to New Japan, or does he go and join Jeff Jarrett in Global Force Wrestling? Who knows? Uh, but I got a lot more to talk about Austin Aries. Uh, an interesting thing that I saw in a video. I don't want to talk about it right now, so I'll talk about it at the end of the show. But let me tell you something. You've got to go and watch this match. If you missed this match, shame on you. This is most likely match of the year TNA. This was freaking off the chain. Awesome match. All four guys did a freaking phenomenal job. If you missed this match, you need to go on TNA's YouTube page. You need to watch this match. It is freaking awesome. I promise you, you will not be disappointed if, to watch this match. I promise you. Okay, we probably had one of the most shocking moments in the history of Impact Wrestling. And, you know, there's the old adage, hell has just frozen over. And believe me, it did when Jeff Jarrett, you heard me correctly, Jeff Jarrett, the owner and founder of Global Force Wrestling, showed up at TNA Impact Wrestling. Uh, Jeff Jarrett was in the ring along with his wife, Karen Jarrett, and Jeff was rocking his uh, Global Force Wrestling t-shirt, and he talked about uh, hell has just frozen over. Everybody's wanting to know, why is the owner of Global Force Wrestling on Impact Wrestling? Well, Jeff Jarrett fills us in very quickly that he got a call from TNA. At first, he wasn't even going to answer the call or even return their call, but he got a little curious, so he called them back, and they said, Jeff, we want you to do one more match. Jeff Jarrett was about to tell him, uh, hell, why would I want to come back for a match? I don't even wrestle for my own promotion. And uh, they said, no, 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 Jeff, you don't understand. It's your match, King of the Mountain. Um, Jeff uh, uh, thought about it, and... Um, and such, he talks, um, uh, Karen uh, grabs the mic and talks about that uh, she uh, reckoned, she told Jeff not to call him back, that uh, TNA is their past, Global Force Wrestling is their future, and not looking back. Uh, but she said after a conversation with Sanjay Dutch, he explained that, uh, that Jeff didn't get to leave TNA on his own terms, and this would be a way to rectify that. Jeff Jarrett announces that one more time, he's walking down the aisle of a, of a TNA event. He will be in the King of the Mountain match at Slammiversary, and he will reign supreme at Slammiversary. This is a holy shit moment. I don't think in a million years we would have ever thought of Jeff Jarrett back in Impact Wrestling. But it's happening. Jeff Jarrett will be at Slammiversary. He will be in the King of the Mountain match. And it's been announced it will be Double J, Jeff Jarrett, King of the Mountain, taking on Matt Hardy versus Drew Galloway versus Eric Young versus MVP versus Bobby Roode. Holy shit, this match is going to be freaking awesome. 
Wait a minute. I think, uh, no, MVP is not in it. Bobby Roode. Uh, I'm so excited. I can't even keep straight. Bobby Roode, Eric Young, Drew Galloway, Matt Hardy. It's only five people, so those are the four that's in it along with Jeff uh, Jarrett. This is going to be freaking awesome. Um, uh, rumor is, this is uh, uh, one, uh, there was a lot of negotiation going around and one hell of a deal had to be made. And it looks like TNA is conceding that for the first tapings of Global Force Wrestling, TNA is going to allow Impact Superstars to participate on those shows. Holy shit. Uh, a lot of people are thinking, could this be an invasion angle? A, a sort of a cooperation between TNA and Global Force Wrestling. Other rumors is, is that uh, Jeff Jarrett is working on gaining major control of TNA and merging the two together. A lot of rumors going around. Nobody knows what's going on, but uh, from the, from what's been said, this is uh, Jeff Jarrett is not. Uh, it's not a one-time thing like he's saying. So this is going to be interesting to see what's going on. I do believe in my heart that uh, Jeff Jarrett will be inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame at Bound for Glory. My feeling is he should have been the first in. No offense to Sting, no offense to Kurt Angle, and no offense to Team 3D. But why in the hell didn't the founder of TNA go in? And, you know, I hopefully this is a way TNA trying to make amends with Jeff Jarrett. But we'll just have to wait and see. But, oh, my God, this is a freaking moment. If you missed this, you got to go on YouTube and watch this because this was freaking awesome. Also, nobody knew it was happening until backstage until five minutes before they went on. And the announcers, for the best I could tell, didn't even know because in the script, there was no blank pages for a uh, time when they don't want to reveal something. So it was such a well-kept secret. My gosh, probably one of the best moments in wrestling history in my opinion. Okay, we have Bram in the ring ready for his challenge, open challenge. Who's going to answer? Vader answers. Vader comes down to the ring and they go at it. Vader dominates Bram. Bram laughs off. Uh, uh, Vader's dominance and they go back and forth trading blows um, Vader nails the uh, plague of uh, uh, Chesterville and uh, has control for most of the match but uh, uh, Bram rolls to the outside he grabs a foreign object and he nails uh, Vader which uh, causes a DQ don't understand because I thought these challenges were no disqualification but nevertheless uh, he gets DQ'd, Vader's the winner, but Bram keeps beating on Vader until out of nowhere, holy shit, it's the blueprint, Matt Morgan, and he makes the save running off Bram, holy shit, another shocker, but not as big as Jeff Jarrett, of course, but still, and such, but it's been announced at Slammiversary, it will be Bram. Versus the blueprint, Matt Morgan. Things are getting interested. We're just going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. But, hey, was a surprise. Um, if you missed this, it's, you didn't miss much. But uh, it's nice to see Matt Morgan back in TNA. And let's see what happens in this run uh, in TNA. Okay, we had... Uh, we had uh, Eric Young taking on the Sarge Chris Mendez and uh, it's, the match starts Eric Young's dominating telling uh, Mendez you do not belong here he hits a powerful DDT and he sends Mendez to the outside of the ring when Mendez gets back in it's Eric Young all the way he's dominating in control has him in a devastating headlock pulling his head back and chin lock makes your neck hurt. Um, uh, Mendez is able to finally get free, but then for his troubles, he gets taken back down by Eric Young. Eric Young tries to take this prosthetic leg off. Um, Mendez is able to uh, power out to prevent it, but unfortunately, he was not able to avoid it. 
Eric Young nails him with the pile driver. One, two, three. Eric Young is the winner. He totally dominated Sorry, uh, Mendez, uh, Chris Mendez. The question is, Eric Young is now in King of the Mountain. What does that mean for the other four competitors? How sadistic will Young be at King of the Mountain at Slammiversary? That's a million dollar question. Um, we know since uh, Eric Young turned heel, he has been dominating as probably one of the top heels of the company. And uh, it's a total character transformation for him, and it's been working. But can it pay off for him at Slammiversary? We'll find out this Sunday. Okay, we had our main event of the night, Matt Hardy taking on Curry Angle, non-title match. Uh, Matt starts out, uh, Hardy goes for it. He nails a nice net breaker on um, Angle, but Angle makes a comeback. He hits a nice belly-to-belly -belly suplex on Hardy. Uh, they start trading blows. Uh, Hardy hits a nice uh, side uh, Russian leg sweep on uh, uh, Angle. Uh, Angle comes back and he nails uh, a couple of German suplexes on Hardy. Um, tries to go for a pin attempt. Hardy's able to kick out. Um, uh, they go back and forth. Um, Hardy is able to hit a uh, side effect on Angle, but Angle's uh, able to get out of the pin attempt. Uh, Angle comes back. He hits two German suplexes on uh, Hardy, but uh, Hardy's able to counter the third one. But before that, um, Angle had went for an angle slam, nailed it, and then uh, went in and got the ankle uh, angle lock on Hardy, but Hardy, uh, Hardy rolled through it and turned it into a pin attempt. Okay, action gets back. Uh, Hard, uh, angle goes for two German suplexes, nails them, goes for the third one. Hardy's able to counter that. He counters uh, the uh, second attempt at angle slam, and then he nails a side effect followed by a twist of fate. Goes for a pin attempt, but uh, Angle is able to get up. Hardy tries for another twist of fate. Angle is able to counter it. He uh, hits an angle slam, and then he gets him into uh, uh, actually avoids the uh, twist of fate. He's able to turn things around and uh, get Hardy into the an uh, angle lock and forces Matt Hardy to tap out. After the match, EC3 and Tyrus comes down to attack. Uh, Kurt Angle, but then uh, Matt Hardy jumps and takes out Tyrus. This allows Kurt Angle to get the angle lock on EC3. EC3 screaming in the middle of the ring and starts tapping as Impact Wrestling goes off the air. What's going to happen next week at the Bell to Bell? Who is going to be the TNA World Heavyweight Champion? Will Kurt Angle be able to be the man who gives EC3, Ethan Carter the third, third, his first loss or will EC3 leave undefeated and as the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion? We will find out next week. What an impact wrestling we had. Superstars of the week, as you can tell, the Dirty Heels, the greatest man that ever lived, if you can't tell, read the back of the shirt, baby. The greatest man to ever live, Austin Aries, and the It Factor, Bobby Roode, and the Wolves, Davey Richards, and Eddie Edwards. One hell of a match. Full battle mayhem was freaking awesome. These four guys deserve to be the superstars of the week because this was the match of the week. This was the probably the match of the year for TNA. What the hell? Jeff Jarrett back in TNA. Hell has literally froze over. This is a shocking moment. Unbelievable. Where is this going to go? We don't know. Also, it was just announced recently. I'm just talking minutes ago that at Slammiversary, there will be a new championship. It is called the King of the Mountain Championship. And the winner of King of the Mountain will be crowned the first TNA King of the Mountain Champion. Will it be Drew Galloway? Will it be Matt Hardy? 
will be the, the sadistic Eric Young? Or will it be the it factor, Bobby Roode, or will it be Double J, the king of the mountain himself, Jeff Jarrett? This is getting better and better by the minute. We're setting up for some great stuff for next week. We have the finals in the best of five series to determine the new T-Day Tag Team Champions as the Dirty Hills, Austin Aries, Bobby Roode take on the Wolves, Davey Richards, and Eddie Edwards. The winners will be the new T-Day Tag Team Champions. Also tonight, we crowned a new X Division Champion in Tigre Uno. How long will he hold on to the belt? That's the big question. Velvet Sky is back on the main roster. Where is that going to leave us? Also, we saw the return of not only the blueprint, Matt Morgan, but Hernandez. Hernandez comes out of nowhere to join the BC, the, B, the BDC, the Beatdown Clan, as they fought with the Ryzen. And it's announced next week it will be the Ryzen taking on the Beatdown Clan, the winners. The losers, let me rephrase it, will have to disband. This is getting good. This is going to be interesting. Uh, also, next week, Taryn Terrell defends her TNA Knockouts title in a triple threat match against Awesome Kong and Brooke. Will we see a new TNA Knockouts champion, or will Taryn Terrell, with the help of the Dollhouse, be able to hold on to that title? Much, much more, and Slammiversary is looking to be freaking awesome. And uh, much, much more. So, let me just go ahead and say, uh, also on my YouTube channel, there will be the Slammiversary Preview Podcast. This will be myself and Andrew B. for the Wrestling Debate. He will be joining me as we give our thoughts and predictions for each of the matches at Slammiversary. And you can catch it on the same channel that you're watching this show. So it's going to be interesting. Now, this is an audio podcast. This will not be a live video show. So, uh, But there will be some nice graphics to compensate. So I can't wait. Looking forward to it. And um, I'm very excited about it. Okay. Um, in two weeks, uh, we're, taking a high, uh, we're taking a break this Tuesday. But in two weeks, we will be back. On the, uh, brought to you by the Nerdport Network on Blog Talk Radio. It's the Wrestling Debate. Uh, join myself, my partner in crime, my good buddy up in Jersey, John P. Mayer, um, along with uh, Sean the Shark Williams, um, and uh, Andrew B., of course, and Michelle, and, and all the other guys and girls. Uh, we're going to be on there and... Uh, uh, in two weeks, we'll be back. We'll have a lot to talk about. We'll talk about this fallout from uh, Jeff Jarrett making his uh, making his return to uh, showing up at Impact Wrestling. We'll also talk about the uh, WWE Fourth uh, of July special um, and much much more. Uh, I will be doing a making an impact show next weekend. Um, I probably want, I'm hoping to get it done that Tuesday, July third. I'm off because of the holiday, so I want to get it done because July the 5th is my day. I'm not doing anything. It's my uh, birthday, so I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, don't know what my wife's getting me. I hope she's getting me something interesting. Uh, so I don't know yet, but I'm going to enjoy the day. And uh, my early birthday present from the WWE is uh, the, uh, sp uh, the, uh, the live special from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, and such. But anyway, this is very interesting. It's crazy what's going on. Speaking about Hernandez, I totally forgot to mention this about Hernandez showing up in, teen, in Impact Wrestling. He's still on uh, Lucha Underground. So there's a lot wondering what the hell happened there. How did he get out of that contract? It's, everybody's calling him the, uh, the uh, today's Rick Rude. So that's going to be very interesting to find out what's going on with all that. But we're living in interesting times, my friend, Teen A. Impact Wrestling is just getting more exciting, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Okay, guys, that's it for this week's edition of Making Impact. I've been your host, Simply Sensational Billy James. Oh, uh, I'm having brain farts here. So much stuff going on in TNA. Uh, 
plug time, I want to make sure to plug uh, for my good buddy, J John P. Bear. An independent point of view. It's uh, usually on Wednesdays, but check uh, the Airport Network's Facebook page for the exact dates and time. John has got his finger on the pulse of independent wrestling. So you've got to check it out. Um, you can get the exact time and dates on the Nerdport Network's Facebook page. It's brought to you by the Nerdport Network on Blog Talk Radio. You can't miss it. He gets some great interviews. He scores some great stuff with promoters and wrestlers. So you got to check it out. Also on Thursdays, hook up with uh, Michelle and Liz, the Dirty Divas. Uh, they've got all kinds of interesting to say what's going on in the wrestling world. So check that out. Well, that's it, my friends, for this edition of uh, Making an Impact. I definitely have been your host, Simply Sensational Billy James. Uh, we'll catch you all next week. And don't forget to check out the special TNA Slammiversary preview podcast with myself and Andrew B. That will be on uh, my YouTube page later on uh, Saturday afternoon.